Welcome back everyone to another Minecraft video. I haven't done one of these in a while actually, not gonna lie, I haven't recorded in quite a bit and I, I apologize for that. But anyway, today we're going to be doing a tutorial on villagers, basically in general. We're not we're not gonna be just talking about breeding really, we're gonna be talking about their their professions, their trades, how you can actually get them, uh, stuff like that. So anyway, let's get into it. So let's just talk a little bit about villagers here for a second. So basically, villagers are these squidward looking people, uh, like these boys over here. They look kind of like this, and they, they look like Squidward from Spongebob, and they're great. Um, so basically, yes, a lot of people have a lot of confusion when it comes to actually breeding these guys, because there's no simple way to do it. You know, when you have like, let's say, uh, I don't know, let's just get like two chickens, and um, we'll, we'll breed these guys, basically. Uh, where are the seeds? Where are the seeds at? Um, there we go. So you get two chickens in your Minecraft world. You right click one, you right click the other, and then they start to wait. Did you? Okay. Yeah. They, they then they start to breed, and then they make they make a baby chicken, and and there you go, is your baby chicken. But with villagers, there's no simple way to really do that because there's no item that makes villagers breed. Um. So I thought it would be kind of useful to make a tutorial about this. So I actually did a video um about how to breed horses and to tame them and all that stuff in the past, uh, which I thought would be very useful for people who are starting the game and getting to know horses and like how to uh, get them and tame, tame them and all this good stuff. And the same thing goes for villagers really, because it's even more complicated with villagers. There's no simple way to actually do it. So yeah, that's what we're basically going to be doing here. I'm going to show you exactly what villagers are and um, how you can get the different types in your world and all this stuff. So okay, let's do this. All right, so first things first, let's distinguish between the different types of villagers. So. You probably think there are, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, six different types of villagers in Minecraft, and you would be kind of correct in a sense, but you're not fully correct. So basically, there are seven different skins of villagers, seven different, uh, how would you say, variations, I guess, kind of, um, but it's also subcategories. Now, this category you'd probably know as a librarian, this one villager, this one farmer, this one blacksmith, this one butcher, and this one as nitwit, or the green rope villager, whichever you want to call them. Um, but there's actually quite a few more different types. So basically, some categories have their own different variations of each one. So for example, here we have librarians, but they're not both librarians. This one is a cartographer, and this one is a librarian. So they have different professions, but they have the same... Well, no, they have the same profession, but a different career, I guess you could say. It's very complicated, but um, it, it's kind of easy to understand at the same time. So here I have labeled um, the different numbers of each profession. So basically, there's a command you can use for this. I have auto jump. Why have auto jump on? No, turn that off. Um, so this command here will let you get whichever type of villager you want, basically. So you will basically do slash summon villager, the coordinates, the profession. This is the skin. This is the actual, like, thing they have, the model. This is what you see um, in Minecraft. So, for example, this one would be the librarian profession, or this one would be the priest profession, all that good stuff. Um, and so that's what that is. And then the career is the different subcategory. For example, zero would be uh, librarian. I switched these two up. Oops. Uh, zero would be librarian, and then one would be cartographer. Uh, so whichever one you wanted to make. So let's just do that, actually. Let's get... Um, this command uh, pasted. There we go. Um, and then if we go over here and we type out the command, we will summon it. What the... I forgot to modify it. Okay, give me a second. Um, so for librarian, it's like one. Uh, and then the career option we want is zero. So if we do this, we will get ourselves a cartographer. Oh wait, cartographer is zero. Okay, I guess I was right then. Never mind. So yeah, basically you can change this to get whichever type of villager you actually want by simply modifying the numbers here uh, for each profession. So one is farmer, uh, two is librarian. No, sorry, zero is farmer, one is librarian, two is priest. Uh, three is blacksmith, four is butcher, and then five is nitwit. So those are the ones, uh, the numbers for each one if you want to get those. And then there's the different categories. So uh, zero is going to be for the cartographer, one is for the librarian. And for this guy, the cleric, the priest, whichever you want to call him, uh, he only has one uh, actual profession. So there's no real way to variate with, between these. I'll tell you what these percentages mean in just a second. Uh, but for now, we're just going to talk about these guys. So, um... Basically, these guys will have kind of like paper trades and trades associated with books and like enchantments and, um, and this guy actually trades maps which are very very useful in survival for when you're going for exploring and dungeons and stuff like that. That's what he's basically for. And then the priest will trade you kind of like magical items kind of. He will trade um, rotten flesh for emeralds, he'll trade gold for emeralds, he also trades redstone, he trades eye of ender, he trades um, diamonds as well I think. He trades very useful stuff but um, 
he, he can be quite a ripoff at times, isn't that right, buddy? And then over here, we have the four farm professions. You may not think there are actually four professions of farmer in Minecraft, but there are. There actually are. Um, so we have the farmer, we have the shepherd, we have the fletcher, and we have the fisherman. Now, these two are quite similar, I find, uh, but they do have some different traits, so there's still a variation there. Um, so this one is zero. The farmer himself is zero. And then one is the shepherd, two is the fletcher, and then three is the fisherman. So the farmer will basically basically trade like like uh, kind of crop trades so you will this is actually one of your main sources to actually get emeralds if you're in a village if if you didn't know uh, going to a farmer is one of the best ways to actually get emeralds because as you know wheat spawns naturally in villages so that means you can literally harvest that wheat and then trade him back for it and he will give you an emerald for that the same with potatoes same with carrots and uh, basically any other crops you can find in villages and he will also trade you different stuff like for example he will trade emeralds for food items and apples and like other stuff like that and uh, then this guy over here is the shepherd he's also really really good for getting emeralds because if you have a sheep farm you can actually shear them for their wool and then you can use that wool to trade with this guy and he'll give you a bunch of emeralds which you can use to buy shears or whatever else i guess the four emeralds is kind of a ripoff for shears but i mean he, he has some better trades hopefully but yeah and then there's this dude the fletcher so he will have kind of um bow string uh, and leather kind of related trades. Uh, he's kind of a bit of a mismatch when it comes to different categories, but um, you can kind of see what he's going to trade. And um, I don't think he takes any... I think, yeah, his, the string trade is the only real good trade in this, I think, because it does give you a lot of emeralds. Uh, if you can get enough string from, say, killing spiders or whatever, or finding uh, a spider spawner in a dungeon or something like that, you can use that string to trade with him and he will give you emeralds. I guess this is okay if you can't find any chickens or flint or anything like that. I guess this is an okay trade if you trade the emeralds for arrows. Now, with villagers, of course, you have to know that you have to use uh, emeralds to trade up. So, for example, you won't be able to knock the next trade unless you trade this for this. It goes without saying, but just in case you didn't know, that's, that's yeah. And then the next guy we have here, the final one, is the fisherman. And, of course, he will have fish-related trades. And he will also trade coal. I did not know that was a thing. And he also trades string, just like the Fletcher. And, wait, he's, okay, he's trading 17. And this guy over here is trading 20. Okay, I know who I'm going to. I'm, I know who I'm going to for my business. All right, so, yeah, this guy will basically trade trade um, fishing rods, he will trade uh, different, I think he trades different tools, I'm not entirely sure, don't quote me on that, he will trade coal, he will trade different types of uh, meat as well, um, especially fish, and uh, yeah, he's kind of useful if you want to get some of the more exotic ocean related items, I guess, but at the same time, it, villager trades aren't really worth it a lot of the time but yeah and um, no one other thing i wanted to mention was that this is as of 1.13 this is as of 1.13 i'm actually doing this um tutorial on it's that's the version that i'm actually using and basically in 1.14 the next update we're getting the village and pillage update which is going to be so so big for villages this could all change in the next update so this will be very useful for you until then when all the trades and professions could actually change and uh Everything is going to be thrown out the window we know about villagers, I think, because it's going to be a massive rehaul of how villagers actually work. So anyway, moving on. Uh, the next one we have here are the blacksmiths. We have the weaponsmith, we have the toolsmith, and we have the armorer. Now, the weaponsmith, of course, will trade you in weapons. And this one actually has an axe, um, which can be considered a weapon, I guess. But yeah, he will trade you enchanted books, which have different weapon enchantments, such as sharpness, probably unbreaking, maybe knockback, maybe fire aspect. He will trade you those. He, I think all of these guys will trade coal. Yeah, because that's an unknown thing for blacksmiths. They will use coal for their actual uh, weapon crafting and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, this guy will trade you in swords. He will uh, trade you... Like, he will take iron from you for... Um, emeralds and uh, he will trade basically ingots and stuff. They all kind of trade ingots and coal because they all need that to actually make their stuff. It would make perfect sense. And uh, this guy will mostly like main in trading weapons, I guess. And then this guy over here is the toolsmith and they will all, uh, by the way, trade enchanted items on occasion depending on which, which type you get. Uh, the trades are randomized so you have no idea which one you're going to get basically. Um, so yeah, you can trade emeralds for this. That's not actually too horrible. Six emeralds for an iron shovel with efficiency two is not completely awful compared to most trades you see with villagers but um yeah this guy basically mains in trading tools and he will also of course have the coal and iron and gold trades which the others will have as well and then there's this guy who's the armor and he will trade you mostly iron armor that's what you mostly see when you get one of these guys but on occasion they will trade diamond which is very very good to have because if you see a guy with like protection three diamond chestplate and he wants maybe like 20 emeralds for it you you go get those emeralds man you go get those emeralds and you trade this man for his chest Play. And moving on to over here, we have the butchers, and they're, they're, they're both butchers, but 
One is one is a butcher and one is a leather worker. Okay, this guy isn't really too much of a butcher. I don't know why he is the cake. You you were lying. You should. I think he should probably be a farmer. Honestly, that would make more sense in my opinion. Anyway, so the butcher here will trade you in different types of meat. He trades basically every type of meat. He will trade you for. He, okay, he will trade. Um, he will trade you emeralds if you give him raw meat, and then he will trade you back cooked stuff if you give him emeralds. So he kind of takes the stuff and cooks it, and then gives you less of it. So he's he's kind of a walking furnace if you have a bunch of emeralds, I guess. It, it's it's kind of let's, let's just see, let's just see. Oh, wait, no, that's the wrong. I, okay, I can't trade with him. Never mind. <laughs> and then this guy over here will trade mostly in leather armor. He will trade in books, I believe, uh, enchanted books on occasion, and. Um, Basically all the stuff you can get from killing animals, so he's, he's kind of cruel, but I mean, he's, he's a guy. Okay, let's just trade with him here for a second and see what he can give us. So we just made a trade there, you get an advancement when you make a trade with a villager in a world, and then they unlock their new trades, you'll see some particle effects, and there you go, you get yourself some enchanted armor. So we have protection to unbreaking three leather tunic for th for eight emeralds, so I mean, it, it, it could be worse, it could be worse. And um, yeah, so those are basically all the useful villagers, <laughs> isn't that right? Yeah, so there's actually five types of useful villagers, and then there's this dude. So as of, I think it was 1. Uh, 1.9 or 1.11, I can't remember, it was one of those two, this guy was added. So he was always in the game, but he was kind of, you, he wouldn't generate naturally in the world. But they added it so he actually would uh, generate naturally in villages in Minecraft as of 1.9 or 11, I can't remember. But um, basically, he's called the Nitwit, and he's utterly useless. Like, I'm, as you can hear, I'm... I'm right-clicking him right now, it's, it's not doing anything, because he doesn't trade anything at all. He is the most useless villager you will ever see in your entire life. Um, but yeah, he's, he's, he's there, he, he does his thing. So now, anyway, onto these percentage things which I was talking about earlier. You're probably wondering, what the heck are those things about? So basically, those are the chances that you will get each villager in Minecraft. So when you're breeding, you have a chance to get any of these villagers, and that chance is actually increased if the parent is that type of villager, if you know what I mean. So let's say you were breeding two librarians, the chances of getting a librarian as a baby villager would be a lot higher than, say, a priest or these, um, just purely because those are the parents and they have more genetic material, but there's still a chance that you can get any of these from that, so I mean, yeah. Um, so the conditions that you actually need for breeding villagers is you have to have less than 35% of the population of doors. So that means if you have, let's say, 20 villagers and you have Oh, I have to do some crazy maths right now. Um, if you have 20 villagers and, let's say, 100 doors, that the conditions are fine for breeding then, because there's enough, there's way more doors than there are villagers. Wait, oh, hold on. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. But let's say you get to 35 villagers and there's only 100 doors still, they won't breed anymore because the population will be above 35% of what the whole door amount is. So, in that case, you would have to actually put down more doors, and the condition you need for doors is you have to have them, like, under a block, basically. Because this door will count as outside, like, for example, this door doesn't count for them. It doesn't count at all, because it doesn't count as a building, if you know what I mean. Uh, it's based on doors being part of a house, and the more houses you have, the more villagers will breed. But it's really about the doors, and um, so, for example, if you have, like, something like this, this will- Oops, I uh, don't put that down. If you have something like this, this will count as, like, um, doors for villagers. And if you get however many we need here, these guys will start breeding naturally. But they won't keep breeding if the population is too high. Um, so another condition that they must meet is they must be willing to trade. So, or not willing, willing to breed through trading. So, what that means is, when you first meet villagers in your world, you'll find a village, of course, and they won't actually breed with you, or no. <laughs> Sorry, I meant they won't breed with each other when you arrive in the village, because they have to be made willing to trade first. Um, so, so anyway, when you first meet these guys, you'll have to give this guy, say, 25 paper, and you can give one of these random guys over here, you can give him his 18 wool, and then they'll both be willing to trade, because you'll see the particles around them, and that may, are not willing to trade, willing to breed, because they have been made trades, and apparently that's what you have to do for them. So, yeah, basically, if you want villagers to breed, you have to go into a village, there has to be more doors, uh, no, this would be 35%, of the, okay, whatever. The, just read these signs, you'll understand. Uh, so you have to trade with two of them to make them breed, uh, to make them willing to breed, and then the population has to be less than 35% of the population of doors. That's what I'm trying to say here. Oh my god. Okay, that was a mouthful.
So yes, villagers are quite complicated to breed, as you can see. Uh, there's a bunch of tutorials out there for villager farming, uh, where you can make like a complicated machine to get them to breed like crazy. Uh, but you don't need to do that, of course. You can just kind of let them live their life in a village. Just if you make houses for them and put a bunch of doors and stuff down, they'll eventually just breed themselves, honestly. And um, as far as iron golems go, it's... Uh, oh my god, the iron golem thing is like a real condition. Uh, iron golems can spawn naturally, of course. But there has to be a lot of villagers, and there has to be um, a lot of doors, as far as I know. So just, you can do some research on that yourself. But um, for now, I'm going to leave this here, because I think I've covered most of what villagers have to offer. Uh, I might do a separate video on illagers and um, pillagers, hopefully, after 1.14. Um, in the future, but for now, I think I'm going to call it here. So anyway, that is pretty much the basics of villagers in Minecraft. If you did learn something and you thought this video was somewhat useful, make sure to leave a like and subscribe, of course, to me because I'll be doing more tutorials like this in the future on different mobs and stuff. So make sure to leave a suggestion if you have any difficulty at all with breeding different types of mobs or taming them or anything like that. And hopefully I can see the comments and do a tutorial on it in the future. So anyway, that will pretty much do it here. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. As I said, make sure to leave a like and subscribe, of course, if you are new. Really does help me a lot. And uh, once again, thank you so much for watching. I will see you all in the next one. Take care.